Hey there! In this video I'm going to show you how to set up a document DP cluster and an EC2 client with a Node.js application and connect these two together. We're going to start by reviewing a simple Mongo application, then we're going to create an EC2 client to host that application, then we're going to create a document DP cluster. Note it's not enough just to specify the port on that cluster. We also have to create a security group that exposes that port. Then we're going to connect those two together. I have the repository open. It simply connects to a MongoDB and runs some tests. Included are CloudFormation scripts to create AWS resources if you don't want to do it manually. You can connect to a local MongoDB or you can connect to an AWS document DB and that's what we are going to focus on. So let's look at the code. Here it's simply connecting to a Mongo and it provides some options on how to connect. Then it runs some tests and if you look at that, so the tests they create and verify a user and then they verify users exist doing a bulk query and then we're done. I prefer infrastructure as code, that way you can trace your steps, you can repeat them and you can delete everything afterward. So let's get started with CloudFormation. If you look at the instructions here, you can see how you create things in CloudFormation via these scripts. Let's get this started, wait for CloudFormation to create the resources and then you can go ahead and review the scripts. Let's start by activating our profile. My profile's name is CopyCop. So then we create the EC2 stack and this will create the EC2 machine that we're gonna use to connect to DocumentDB and will host our Node.js application. And then we create the DocumentDB cluster. All right. Let's review the CloudFormation scripts while AWS is creating the resources for us. We have a CloudFormation folder and there under an EC2 stack. We have some parameters and we're using Amazon Linux 2023 as the image. We're setting up T2 macro in our instance. And when we're starting up the instance, we update yum, install git and node.js, we clone an application and create some scripts to set things up. We add a security group because we want to be able to navigate into that instance. So we allow all connections to connect to this instance, but usually you should just allow connecting from your IP address. Creating the cluster itself is rather straightforward. There's a username, a password, a port, and some other configuration options. What's not straightforward is that this does not actually open up the cluster to external access. You need to specify a security group that opens up this port and specify the machines that need access to it. So I'm just keeping this simple for now and opening this up to everyone. You would probably want to limit this to your EC2 machines. So you add the security groups here and then we are specifying the smallest instances available for this test case. So uh, a medium sized instance. I'm inside the console. So let's navigate to CloudFormation. Our stacks are ready, so let's open up each in a separate tab. So this is the EC2 stack, so let's see if our machine is here. So resources, yes it's here, so the instance is here, let's open that in a new tab. Alright, here we see the running instance, so let's connect to it via SSH. Yes, our setup file is here, so let's run that up. This will download the repository and install dependencies. So while this is working, let's head over to CloudFormation again and find our docdb stack and resources. And here we can find our cluster. Let's navigate to it. It has some helpful things. So here we see how to connect to it. We need a bundle, like a bundle for the certificate. So let's copy this, head over here. To the, to the EC2 instance and let's navigate into the application folder and download this file. Okay, it's here. So let's head back to the cluster again and find the connection string. Let's copy it and we need to tweak it a bit. So paste it here. So we need the password. So it's test1234 and then we're going to swap out SSL for TSL. 
It works better with Node.js and it's deemed more industry standard. So it's here. So let's copy then all of this. And head to our EC2 instance and run npm run ps. So this will build and run everything. All right, so now we need to connect via option one, which is URI. And then we paste in the connection stream. Great, so it connected, it found and created the user, and then it read all users. Since this was just a test and we don't want to incur costs, we're gonna want to delete the stacks. So this will delete all of the resources that we created in AWS. So we'll delete the EC2 stack, and then we'll delete the document DB stack. Now we should be good to go. That's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you're going forward with any of this and putting any of this into production, then please consider narrowing the scope of your security groups so they only open up for specific IP addresses or EC2 instances. I'll put a link to the repository in the video description. Please take a look and play with it if you like. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next video.